Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 right here on our 2022 Volkswagen Taos. So this is going to be one of the best bike racks that you can get that isn't as pricey as the Kuat NV. You have all the versatility as well as the aesthetics of a premium Kuat rack, although we do have some limitations like less weight capacity. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about those specs. We'll talk about those measurements, but we are going to focus on our Volkswagen Taos today. That way you can see what is the better fit for you, your different types of bikes, and your vehicle. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the tilt away feature. So we have this lever right over here. You're going to want to pull that lever and just let it glide down to a tilt. And why would you tilt your bike rack away? Well, if you want to access your hatch. So here you can see from the door to the pedals to the handlebars, we have plenty of clearance, enough to get into our hatch, grab whatever we need, whether it's our helmets, our bags, our waters. And when we got them, we just close the door, lift up on the rack, and it snaps into place there. And just like that, we can hit the road again. So this makes it super convenient compared to having to take your bikes off in order to get something real quick. Now this does have a weight capacity of 40 pounds per bike. So slightly more than your standard weight capacity of about 35 pounds, but not as much as a weight capacity that the Kuat NV would offer you of 60 pounds. If you have those extra heavy electric bikes, this might not be the best option for you. So keep that in mind. Now the way our bike is mounted here is we have two mounting points. One is gonna be our front wheel mount. I like pretty much any bike rack that has that front wheel mount just because it makes it so convenient for those different types of bikes. Whether I have a carbon fiber frame bike, I'm not worried about accidentally warping or cracking my frame. Or if I have a women's bike, children's bike, step through bike, I don't need to get a frame adapter bar since it secures it by the front wheel. Then you go over to the rear wheel and we have our strap. So this is gonna be the rear wheel strap. We're kind of pushing it here at our wheelbase of 47 inches of capacity, but this tilts back and forth to accommodate that. When we wanna take our bike off, we just press this lever, lift up on the strap and just kinda of Fold that over to the side so it doesn't get caught up in our spokes. Then we go over here to the front, hold on to your bike as you do so, so it doesn't tilt back towards your window. Press this button, lift up on the clamp or the mount, push that out, and just like that, we are ready to go on a bike ride. So I'm gonna leave this bike over here to the side so that we can take a closer look at the rack itself. Here we have our rear cradle. I talked about tilting back and forth to accommodate those different wheel bases. Notice also though that we have these grooves on the inside. So we have a really thin grooves for our road bike tires and our wider groove for our tires of up to three inches. That strap goes and secures right there. And then let's go to the front. So we have our front wheel cradle. That one just folds down just be nice and neat. Then we have that front wheel mount. We have a little bit of a rubber padding on the inside just to help give us grip on those tires as it secures it. So we're gonna fold this down behind our cradle. There we go. Let's make it extra nice there, <laughs> nice. Okay, let's talk about how much length this adds to the back of our vehicle. We have a compact rack here but how compact does it get? Measuring from our bumper to the end of the rack, it sits at 30 and a half inches. So that's pretty good for a two bike platform rack, enough space apart where your bikes aren't colliding into each other. Still a measurement to remember, whenever you back into your garage or try to park into a tight spot, don't forget that you now have a bike rack as well as bikes behind you. Another measurement is gonna be ground clearance. That's going to be measured from the end of the rack to the ground, about 16 and a quarter inches. Compare that to the shank though. And that's only eight 
and a quarter inches. So the shank, or I guess the hitch receiver on our cows is actually really close to the ground. So whenever you have accessories, please get something that has a shank rise like this. That way your bikes are staying higher up off the ground when you're going up those steep inclines like those driveways and those hills. Okay, let's take a look at another um, feature of this rack, which is when you're not planning on going out for a bike ride, but you also don't wanna take your bike rack off, what do you do? Well, you can fold this up into the compact or portable position. Remember that lever we pulled earlier? We'll pull that again, but this time lift up on the rack and then it's gonna fold up just like that. Let's take some measurements. Measuring from our bumper to our front wheel mount, we have a clearance of two inches, so plenty of clearance there. The length now added to the back of our vehicle is bumper to the tray, six inches, but sticks out further down here, and that's gonna be about 12 and a half inches which is a little bit over a foot of distance. Big difference compared to when the bike rack was folded down. You'll want it in this position when you're just planning on driving around town, you're not taking your bikes out just yet. Also, with this looking like this, we have the Kuwait Sherpa in the gun metal gray, and that has these nice orange accents. You can also get this in metallic black or pearl. I personally prefer this because look at how well it blends in with our Taos. But other than that, what is it like living with a bike rack behind you? Well, notice how high up this sits. We have it where our rear window is completely visible, our tail lights are visible, our emblem is visible, even our backup camera sits above the bike rack and that's visible too. It kind of covers our license plate, but if you're sitting above, you'll see it too. So just keep that in mind. If that's a big issue for you, you can always just step on this lever and bring that rack down. Okay, let's talk about how this fits into our hitch. The version I have, it has a two inch shank, but you can also get the Kuat Sherpa with an inch and a quarter shank, depending on the size of your receiver, works the exact same way. So make sure you get the one to match. We have a hitch pin and a lock on our bike rack. So this, these keys fit the cable lock that goes around your bikes and into the bike rack, so it's all keyed alike. This is a tool-free install. You just pop it into your hitch and you tighten it down with this knob over here. That way you don't have to worry about carrying around sockets or wrenches or tools. You just tighten it down and you have an anti-rattle effect. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna shake our bike rack back and forth, but try to simulate that road movement and vibration and I'm really just moving the car at this point. That's because that connection between the bike rack and our vehicle is nice and secure. Okay, my personal thoughts about the Kuwait Sherpa is if you do not have those extra heavy electric bikes and you don't have those extra long um, wheelbase of a bike, this would be a great option for you because it checks off most of those boxes. You've got locks, you've got tool-free install, you have a really nice looking bike rack here, and you have different color options. Hopefully, this video helped you out with seeing what was the best fit for you. If you need a little bit more weight capacity, maybe check out the Rocky Mounts monorail. has kind of a similar look, but a bit more weight capacity at 60 pounds per bike. But if you don't need that weight capacity, go ahead. This was a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 2-bike 2 platform rack on our 2022 Volkswagen Taos. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. So we can see here how the bike rack moves with our truck.